Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by the Monkey God up against Gustavo Bala in the main event. One fight night, 24 world title on the line. Interim strawweight MMA world title to be exact. Jared Brooks, it's been a while, man. How's it going? It's been going great, man. The camp has been going silky smooth. I've got to train with some of the best of the best that Michigan has to offer. And yeah, man, I'm just super excited to showcase um, a new and different kind of style than I'm used to showing. Do you ever kind of stop for a moment and think like, you know, a kid from Indiana, you've been to Japan, you've been to Qatar, you've been fought in the US, fought in the UFC, been a world champion and won, and now you're main eventing and the home of Muay Thai in Bangkok, Thailand. Is that ever surreal to you that this sport has taken you to all these places? Um, no, man, I believe in myself and I believe that God, you know, puts people on a path and if they work hard enough and, you know, the destiny pretty much comes to them, you know, and, but you've got to chase it too at the same time. So um, I, I'm not surprised that I've done all this traveling. It's all my dreams and aspirations as a kid. And, you know, I'm still kind of like a an adult kid. So I'm still getting to live out my dreams and aspirations. And, uh, you know, I, I thank my family and I thank the people that are around me constantly um, just for giving me those opportunities. How's it been for you being a, you're still a pretty new dad, right? How are you juggling being an elite level fighter and being a dad? How's that going? It's a new kind of motivation and it's a new inspiration too. Uh, you know, seeing her every day, getting to wake her up, feed her and coming home after a hard training session. It's the best thing, man. And it only motivates me and it only gives me momentum and uh, just a, a lot of, um, a lot of love that I have felt that I haven't felt from anybody in the world. So feeling that it gives me a, a lot of power going into this fight. Can you talk me through what was going through your head? in Qatar like I, you, did you get like a scolding from Chatri? like you seem really upset understandably and frustrated of course worried about Joshua what a roller coaster man like can you talk us through how that whole sequence played out and then after it all I'm sure you're desperate to kind of put it put put things right in your eyes yeah man uh it, it sucked to let down the one championship team and you know, I think of them as like a family. And I told Shatri that after my fight, and you know, I, I, I always lose with good graces, no matter what, you know, this is a, this is a, a fight game and you have to have people that want to view you and you want people to get excited and, and uh, get emotionally invested. And, and, you know, I think I did a really good job of, of that with Pasia because Pasia was uh, internationally and, you know, worldly loved. So I, I wanted to to put a little stake in that at, at the same time. But um, throughout the banter, throughout all of that, man, I respect that all of my opponents and it shows after the fight. And um, it sucked because, you know, when you win in a, in a tremendous fashion, you have nothing going on in your head other than, yo, I just won this fight. I just won $50,000 and I'm going to go hang out with some shakes. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, seeing Shatri, how upset he was cage side, it really was a, a culture shock to me to to the point to where I was just like, man, I, I really did, you know, mess up. And, um, you know, the boss isn't happy. And, you know, I'm a company man. I really want the company to to flourish. And I want the company to to be in good graces with the people that are one investing, two that are you know viewing and and understanding our sport and how different we are to different organizations. So um, you know it was a big kick in the ass, but at the same time it gave me three times as much motivation and it changed my landscape and how I think and how I go about this fight game. Do you think there's an, also an element of bad luck? Like in terms of bad luck, I feel like as an MMA fighter, two kind of big instances, you know, against Jose Torres, against Joshua Pascal, which you kind of, you're a monster at slamming people. Like, you know, there, there aren't too many better than you. But now when you go into this fight against uh, an Olympic level wrestler, is that going to play on your mind at all? I think it's it's actually really cool that, you know, the things that are my biggest strengths, you know, are my 
my biggest weaknesses as well are my losses. So um, one championship, their rule set isn't keen for, for wrestlers. So it just gets me out of my comfort zone. And as a martial artist, I think that that's very important. And, um, you know, I, I've been training for three months for this fight and I have not trained one slam. So I'm going out with a very different mindset into this fight. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm i willing to wrestle with Gustavo Bolart if he gives me that opportunity. But I, one, I'm not sleeping on this guy. This guy, you know, is is an Olympic level athlete, even though the guy is 4'11". I've seen him beat some of the best of the best in the world. He is uh, a sleeping giant, literally. So you can't you can't sit there and sleep on on somebody until, you know, you wake up. So I've very carefully and put a lot of mental uh, strategy into this fight because I know it's going to be different than any other fight that I've heard littler guy. And I know that I went against Bokong Masanyane, but one round doesn't show anything. So um, you see Matt Sarah beat GSP. That's not going to happen to me. I'm going to make sure that all of this uh, culmination – of my career is going to show that I keep on getting better every fight and it doesn't matter who I go against. And it does suck that I have to go against Gustavo Ballard because in a viewer's eye, they might see me as, you know, picking on the little guy type thing. So uh, I, you know, and that's no disrespect. I'm just saying like from a Westerner's eye, they're going to be like, dude, this is like a, even if I knock out Gustavo Ballard, it's like he knocked out a little guy. You know what I mean? And uh, and like I said, that's no disrespect to Gustavo. It, it, it just sucks because I feel the best I've ever have in a camp, which is usually about every camp. But, you know, last camp I had a lot of aches and pains. I was overworking myself and, and um, I, I didn't have a, uh, a time to where I could get better. You know, because I was just focused on him and focused on, you know, my conditioning and the things that, you know, uh, played good in that first fight. But this time I went through an incubation process to where I actually like understand what I need to do and, and understand how I'm going to beat one, the up and comers that are that are coming up. I, I pay attention to everyone fight night. So uh, all those guys that are coming up man, I, I understand that you're trying to be in the place that I am. But dude. I've worked so, so hard and there's steps and there's levels to this game. And I'm going to show Gustavo that there's steps and levels to this game too. He hasn't been in this fight game as long as me. He's been in the wrestling game just as long as me. So um, I do see him wanting to wrestle, but at the end of the day, man, this is a fight and we're in a ring. How do you like competing in a ring versus a cage? I've only competed in a ring once and it, it went to a no contest, uh, you know, Gustavo, it, it, I hope this doesn't happen because Hiro Uchi, I went against Hiro Uchi in Japan and it was in a ring and Hiro, a lot of little guys, they they lead in with their head because they want to go in for a shot after. And, you know, I, I have a different kind of style compared to Gustavo. He, he leads with his head. He hits literally headbutts about every opponent. And then he rocks them. If you watch the Ryota Sawada fight, uh, before he started hitting those hard knees, he hit him in the head with his head, you know? So uh, I'm not calling Gustavo a cheater, but he might use that to to his play here in a ring. But uh, I'm going to keep my space. I'm going to understand where he's at at all times. And I have a target and I got to knock it down. Have you got a bucket list of things that you need to achieve in your career? Uh, you know, that's, you see a, a lot of Muslim fighters talk about God and, you know, their belief in the process and stuff like that. But, you know, I, it, my perception of God is good orderly direction. So I think that wherever I see myself in a good place, uh, I'm going to be there. So um, it's all about manifestation. It's all about you trying to find your place in life and find your place as a person. So um, I, I, you still got to constantly try to find your place as a person. And even as a fighter in one championship, I've got to find my place. So uh, I'm, I'm super excited to just show uh, a different kind of style of art 
and uh, to make people understand that I adapt to every fighter that I fight. And I think that's why I'm so dangerous. And I think that a lot of fighters don't don't do the things that I do. And I'll, I'll go work with the best Muay Thai guys in the world. I'll go work with the, the best Jiu Jitsu guys. I'll go work with some of the best wrestlers, the, the best boxing coaches. And that's what's good, great, great about America is America has all of the, it's like the world all in one country. So I, I get to travel wherever I want and train with whoever I want. You know, I'm a one champion. You know, thank God that I am a one champion because all these guys want to work with me now. And I just keep on getting better. I put myself in uncomfortable positions and, you know, I, hopefully I'm in the best position at the end of this year. Have you got any crazy training stories about, have you trained with anybody, uh, anybody, in, uh, that I know recently? No, I, I keep a very small group. And, uh, you know, Alex Hody, he's one of the best jujitsu practitioners in the world. And one of the best coaches, too. He understands the mixed martial arts aspect of American jujitsu and how it goes into uh, martial arts, period. So he he's a, a great coach. I think it's more of my coaches and not th the people that I'm working with. You know what I mean? Um, the mind is a lot more powerful than the bodies that you work with. So uh, I, I have a lot of amazing coaches and I have to give them all of the credit. I have coaches that work with Dan Henderson, uh, Sam Alvey, uh, you know, James Lee has worked with every great martial artist that's ever came out of Michigan. I got Justin Scoggins. He's a, a mini Stephen Thompson. So I'm I'm getting a thousand kicks thrown at me at, at a million miles an hour. And uh, we got some up and comers, too. We've only been open at for a year and a half at Roots Combat Club. But man, our kickboxing program our wrestling program and our jujitsu program is off the chain. And we are going to have some of the best and Mu Muay Thai. Are, are, we have mitten Muay Thai here in Michigan. I think that people should check it out as well. Super, super important for Muay Thai here in the Midwest. And I think that it's important because one championship is looking for up and comers with Muay Thai. So kickboxing and Muay Thai, man, I'll tell you what, Roots Combat Club in the state of Michigan, I don't see too many other people messing with us. And our jiu-jitsu program is, is going to be just as good as the B team. How important is it to you that there's gold on the line here? Do you define yourself as a champion with, without it? I know some guys, they... They focus on winning a world title and then to get it and then to lose it. That that would really mess people up, you know, and uh, I feel like you seem well adjusted with it. But is it is it going to be really important to get that back on your shoulder? You know, your whole life, you get taken things uh, away from you. And, you know, I don't want to seem like a Bible thumper or anything, but, um, you know, Job is a is a very good uh, story and understanding that and, and how God can take away from you and you still are just sticking with the path and understanding and trying to find good direction and trying to, to keep a good mindset through all the, the shit that you dig through, you know? And I, uh, I really appreciate the people that stick by me and understand that, you know, life is a course and there's a lot of hurdles. I'm not afraid to, to jump over them. If I trip, I trip, I fall and I come back. And that's been my whole career at, you know, I, I'd like to call myself a winner, but I do lose and I'm not afraid to lose. And I think that that's what makes me dangerous, too. There's what, what are you going to do to me, man? What are you going to do? Well, I'm, I'm 31 years old. Right. And I, if if I do lose, then I'm, I still have a family. I still have God. I still have the things that are right in front of me. Right. But I'll be damned if I let myself get dominated by another man. Right. That's not going to happen. I I have a family to feed. I have the things that are in front of me and the tasks that are at hand. And it's not just Gustavo. You know, there's life outside of fighting and there's harder tasks as well. But I'm not I'm not afraid to tackle any task. I'm not afraid to die for, for what I believe in and what my cause is. So my cause is to have one, my daughter look at me like I'm a superhero when I'm older, right? My daughter looks at me like a superhero, then I did my job. Another thing, have my family, you know, my wife look at me as, you know, a great provider and somebody that fought for his family, you know. Um, and besides that, 
I want to have kids, you know, 10, 13 years old plus look at me like Demetrius Johnson and want to tackle, you know, and, and that's what gets me excited. I want to get humbled by one of these young kids one day and just be like, I was the biggest fan of you at one point in time. That makes me super happy. That's all. Ain't about a belt. That's some great words, man. That's awesome. Uh, I think you've already achieved that regarding your daughter. You should be immensely proud. That's so cool. N- knowing that your father is a world champion. That's very awesome. Um, yeah, the, the US cards are coming up. Were you, were you disappointed that you weren't on then? You're, you're carrying this card. You're main eventing. Um, is the US with one championship going back there? Is that something that that is on your list? That Because there's going to be more US cards next year, right? Or is it not, not really something that bothers you? You know, I'm, I'm not dumb. I understand that I'm a straw weight and some other weight classes they don't dig in the western hemisphere and i understand that man and i don't hold a grudge or anything from one championship of course i'm gonna put my say out and be like yo (laughs) i'm here i'm american you know but at the same time i i understand the industry and i understand like how things roll so yeah i'm not really mad about that but if you did want to put on the smaller weight classes i think that me and demetrius johnson would be the perfect fight and making people really like uh you know little guys fighting because in the western hemisphere how tall are you andrew six two you're six two you're you're about average here in america right your (laughs) average six two your average six two guy thinks that he can beat my ass no problem Right. So when he watches me fight, he can't take me serious. And I understand that to to some point of view. But at the same time, none of these guys been in the fucking gym. You know, none of these guys. uh, That's the thing I love about Asia and, uh, you know, a lot of other parts of the countries that I've been to their whole like structure in their country is martial arts and they're so respectful you don't see people you know shitting on each other and in some places it's against the law in the middle east right um so i think that that's what america needs is to to make people not have that shock value necessarily but following and understanding people and their stories and how they rise to success I think that that it, that's what I looked up to when I was a kid. I I don't know if you guys know who Ken, Kale Sanderson is. Kale Sanderson is one of the best wrestlers of all time. He's coaching at Penn State now, and he's on his way to being the best coach of all time as well. But whenever I watch him, even when he was at Iowa State, you know he would he would be like, man, I, they would ask him like, hey, how, how did you peck this guy? He's amazing, right? Then he goes. Uh, I I need to go back to the room and get better. That's what I need to do. I'm not going to answer any other questions. I'm going to tell you guys I'm going to get better. And what happens? Kale Sanderson gets better. And that's what made me like really want to tackle this sport and tackle, you know, any obstacle in front of me because, you know, people like Kale, people like Brent Metcalf, you know, these wrestlers, Randy Couture, uh, Tito Ortiz, even though he was more of a, of a of a disrespectful fighter, at the same time, I I understood that at a young age that he wasn't he wasn't really like that, you know. And I and I loved fighters because of that that actually wanted to to put almost a, a front and you're putting more chips on the table for you for yourself in your career. And that's what I looked up to. I looked up to Tito Ortiz, and I was I'm not afraid to put the chips on the table, but at the same time, um. My my daughter means more than anything to me, and I want her to see me in a shining light and be like, "Oh, okay, so you went from uh the the dark night to the white night, you know." And and that's what I want to be. Could I uh, get a quick prediction for Cade Mikey from you? Because uh, Mikey jumping up two weight classes is wild, right? And he's those pizzas are serving him well. He's looking jacked. Mikey is a perfect description of god looking over you your whole life right and he anything that mikey wants to be good at 
he will be good at just because he has that mentality. He has that good mentality. There's not a bad thing that comes out of that guy's mouth unless you wish him harm and you wish him, you know, dirt. So um, Mikey and I, when we had our fight, amazing guy. Like literally we were hugging, talking, bullshitting, you know, the whole time. And and before and after the, the match, awesome. Cade, love Cade. Me and Cade and Ty, we hung out uh, almost the whole time when I was in Thailand when I went against Mikey. And I've been, I was watching a lot of their instructionals on how to get out of stuff like what Mikey is doing and, and beating people with. So it's a very interesting matchup. Uh, I, I do think that Cade has the advantage just because he is used to competing at that weight. But another advantage that Mikey might have is he is a smaller guy, which means that he is more technical and understands more holes than your average bigger guy. Is Kate going to take him down? He might throw him on his head. I don't know. But because uh, Kate is a good wrestler, he has that ADCC. And I got to thank Mikey because he got me into jujitsu, like literally got me in like heavy in jiu-jitsu because i started to realize i nullify a lot i just nullify jiu-jitsu I, I i take people and i nullified mikey for a good amount of time too it was very hard for him to tap me out but at the same time i need i need to work my my defense and my offense and and understanding the fine tunings of, of what i feel like is american jiu-jitsu not brazilian jiu-jitsu geez man my thing, fingers can't take that you know so uh but Props to Mikey, man. He really made me love love the art of jiu-jitsu. Again, uh, you know, when I was young, when I was like 10, 11 years old, I was really good at jiu-jitsu, and I just stopped because of wrestling. But now I found that love again, and I thank Alex Hody for that too. Are we going to see that against Gustavo? I guess if we could round off with uh, what, what the fans can expect. I don't know if you want to give anything away, but what are you feeling? Are you feeling a knockout? Are you feeling using a jiu-jitsu here? Yeah. Man, I've been watching a lot of Gary Tonin instructionals with my team, and we've been uh, we've been going over a lot of stuff uh, together and just understanding, um, you know, where we need to be. And there's there's little checkpoints that we we need to find. And if when I find those checkpoints, I think that Gustavo's is gonna have a bad day. All right, we'll leave it at that. If it, you guys on, gotta... if it goes on the ground, Andrew, if it goes on the ground. <laughs> You guys got to tune in for that, Jared. It's always so engaging speaking to you, man. Uh, hearing you talk, it's been it's been a while. So great to see you back in there. Gold on the line. Um, it's good. It's good. Looking forward. Thank to you, it. brother. I appreciate you, and it's always great to speak to you. And um, it, always great to be on SCMP. Stick a move in the ring. You can hit 